which is kind of, I don't know, depressing. So why don't we get right on into it? First things first, you need to open up Google, search Minecraft for Forge.net. Well, actually, no, not Minecraft Forge.net, just Minecraft Forge. Because Minecraft Forge.net is a forum that I help on, help out on actually a little bit. So we are going to download the MDK for the latest version of Forge, which seems to be taking its time to load. Meanwhile, while we wait for that, let's open up a folder. And here we need to create a new folder. We're going to call this forge dash whatever this version is, which I'm just going to hit skip and copy from here to create the name of the folder. Remove MDK. And then we're going to open up into here. We are going to drag this into here. Close that now. Extract the files here. And then we can delete the zip. Shift right click. Open the command window. Grade loo. Set up D. Comp. Workspace. Workspace. Eclipse, because that is what we're going to be used to program. Now, this is going to download and set everything up, so while that's going, I'll, I'll just stop recording and get back to you when it is done. As you can see, we got an error here, actually. It's because I spelt it wrong. It's, it's just grade lu set up decomp work space. Pretty sure we spelled it right that time. Eclipse. Now I will be back when it is done configuring and stuff. Okay guys, we're back and it has finished setting up and this time I typed everything correctly so you see there are no errors. Now that's done, we just need to start up Eclipse. I'm going to be using Eclipse Neon. Use whatever you prefer. I'm also going to have the preference visual view uh, dark because I like it. So we need to switch workspace or create a new workspace. Um, so to do that, I'm going to put it into my Forge mods. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this tutorial mod just to be guess following standards we're going to switch to that workspace and Eclipse Neon is going to load up again and if here I'm gonna go over this this is going to be for people that know Java I'm not going to explain Java in this tutorial series I'm going to explain Forge and Minecraft code so if you do not no Java, this is not the right tutorial for you. So, yeah, so we're just going to create a new Java project. We're going to call it, once again, YouTube Tutorial. We're going to hit finish. And then we are going to import a general existing project into workspace. Um, forge. Okay, Forge Mods, then we need to go to the Forge version that we set up earlier, which just happens to be 76 for me, and hit OK, and it'll select it, I'll hit Finish, then I'm actually just going to set up my preferences on the workspace, like how it is laid out. So, then we're just going to right click, build path, configure the build path, projects, add, forge. This way, we have access to the forge source. But we don't have full access yet. We need to select all, apply, okay. Now we 
have access to the forge source and we are going to get into modding. So first let's create a new package. I'm just gonna call it dev dot tutorial dot Sure. I like to have three, it's just a preference. Three or more. Then we are going to create a new class. It's going to be a public class, and we're just going to call it tutorial main. Or not we are. I am I'm going to call it tutorial main. Name it the name of your mod. Um I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. We are going to actually up here we're going to create a annotation. mod ID is equal to a string. We're not going to fill that out yet. Um, name is equal to a string. Version is equal to a string. Um, I always forget the name of this. So we're going to import Control Shift O and Eclipse. And it's lagging a little bit. Oh, I know why it's lagging. I'll, I'll be right back, guys. Okay guys, we are back. Don't mind that one I typed down there, that was just me starting up my uh, recording again. Acceptab accepted Minecraft versions, which is also a string. We are going to put brackets, and then we are going to do 1.10, um, comma, no, yes, I think that's the structure, 1.10. I don't really have to type this much. So down here we are going to make a public static final string, call it mod ID. And then we're going to set it equal to our mod ID. For me it's just going to be tutorial. And then obviously we're going to do tutorial main dot mod ID. We're going to do this for each of them. And yes, I know I could put them all in one line, but no, I'm not going to do that. No, public static final string name tutorial. Now that we have those, we're just going to create a. Uh, we're going to use another annota annotation at event handler public void pre init fml pre initialization event event. Then we're going to create two more methods at event handler, and they're all going to be public void. We're going to call this init fml initialization event, and I spelled that wrong right here. It doesn't really matter. It's just, I guess, OCD. But and then this is post init. init. These are basically references to Minecraft. So pre-initialization of Minecraft, initialization of Minecraft, post-initialization. At least that's how I've come to understand it. So now we have these three methods. We're going to create a couple variables up here that we aren't really going to use right away. At instance mod ID, oops, mod ID, public, wow, tutorial main. We didn't mean to create the constructor. I didn't. Wow, that well, I've never seen that before. We're gonna call it instance. Obviously we don't need to import anything except for that at instance. Then we need to do at side proxy. 
see. This is going to take a caught inside the sequence of a string, and these are going to be paths to our proxies at server side. And then in here, we're just going to create a public well, server proxy. We're going to call it proxy. Uh, and it actually needs to be static. So now we're actually going to create the class server proxy. I'm going to put it in dot proxies. You're going to create three methods in here. Public. Here, we can just copy these. I don't know if that copied, so I'm going to do it again. And paste those. Remove the at event handler on them. And then remove the import, because it is not necessary. Then we need to create a new class. We're going to call it client proxy going to extend server proxy finish and then we are also going to paste those methods in here and unimport that then we need to basically take the file path to tell it well we're using these ones not the other mods ones this is going to be client proxy at the end, and obviously this is going to be dot server proxy. Now, Forge should recognize this as a mod, and we are going to launch the client. which, since I'm zoomed in, it's, it's actually just modifying the, uh, it's actually just modifying the font size. So, oh god, that's gonna be a pain. Um, when there's an error, I don't want to see everything. We're gonna go down to this font size. Minecraft is not responding. Alright, good, it's responding again. And now we just need to wait for it to load. I hope you can see this. Let me check. Yes, you can see that. It's almost done. Just loading the models. This is the new JSON system. It takes a longer time to load up. But it is overall a better system in the end. As you see, we have four mods loaded. That was rather loud. Thank you, Minecraft. We have the <laughs> MCP code. In fact, they updated that. That looks pretty, pretty cool. Forge mod loader, Minecraft Forge, and then we have the example on it. Hmm. Ah, yes, yes. I'm gonna change this. Sound. Drop that. Drop that. Okay. That's good enough for now. Reason it didn't run our mod or load our mod is because we forgot to add it to the class path. As many of you guys know, as long as you know Java, you know what the class path is. And if you don't add it to class path, it, it, it doesn't load because it doesn't see it. So apparently client's already running, that is a lie. Because I quit game. Let's just start up a new one. It's gonna take a little while. See you when it uh when it loads. Alright guys, I'm back, but just as I got back I noticed something wrong with the code. But it, it does load, that's all we really wanted to do, but we don't add anything yet. That is something I will cover in the next tutorial, but first, I should probably correct this mistake. Before we can actually use this, we need to make it a static variable. Don't worry about initializing it, that's what this does. And yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.